G'day guys, Alex from Axe Physio here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about ACL rehab and specifically phase one ACL rehab. What do I do when I get out of surgery? So let's get straight into it. So number one, the first thing that we need to do is decrease pain and decrease swelling. Guys, you've had two major injuries in a short amount of time for a lot of people that have had the surgery. The first injury is how you did your ACL injury. The second injury is the surgery they did to repair it. Both of these things are very traumatic. There's a lot of blood and swelling and changes that have now happened in the knee and we need to make sure we respect that and look after it. So if you've been told to be on crutches, make sure that you're staying on crutches. Don't try to be too brave and walk and make the knee swell more than what you've been told to do, especially if you're someone that's been put into a brace, put onto crutches because you've had meniscus involvement as well. So in this number one, the pain management and swelling, keep your leg elevated, stay on crutches if you've been told to stay on crutches, make sure you wear compression. Compression is really good at trying to reduce the amount of swelling around the knee. You can use cold packs if you would like. It's not necessarily proven that it will help to decrease swelling, but it can definitely work as a nice analgesic because it can numb the area a little bit as well. I like to make sure that you keep doing things like calf pumps, you keep doing your exercises, and that's gonna to help to get the blood flow going and get rid of some of the swelling that's pooling in that area. And make sure that when you're lying down, you elevate your leg above your heart. Unfortunately, that's just about all you can really do in the pain and swelling side of things. Uh, make sure you're listening to what the GP or what the surgeon's telling you in regards to your medication. Part two is we wanna to try to get your knee bending and extending as much as possible. So bending, bringing the knee towards you, flexing the knee, that's really important. We try to get as much bending as back as possible. And a nice way to do that is some banded heel slides. Pop your heel on a frictionless surface. You might wanna add a sock to your leg. You pop a power band or a towel around the middle of your foot and just try to bring your leg back towards you as much as you can under its own steam and then assist with your hands to bring the knee further towards you. You want to push into a little bit of resistance but not trying to force anything. You're gonna get improved range of motion from repetition, not from one really big pull. For those that may find it hard to sit on the ground, a seated variation is also an acceptable option for this exercise. Bike skills are a great way to restore some knee bending. However, it is a little bit discomforting, so it really depends on the person. Make sure that we're only doing the range that feels comfortable and the range of motion that you're allowed to do based on your post-op protocol. Generally, half circles are pretty acceptable where we're just going to essentially a small bend when you pedal in either direction. You're not doing a full circle at any one point in time. It's just about being progressive with this exercise. And the same goes for extension. We want to get your leg straight. That is probably the number one thing to do in this early phase is get that knee straight. We don't want the knee to get stiff and get locked in any sort of position that we don't want it to be. We want the leg completely straight. To facilitate knee extension, I like to use knee pushdowns. To begin, have your leg on a frictionless surface or on a roller and try to straighten your knee as much as you can comfortably. Have your hands just above your kneecap and push down on your thigh to assist the last part of your available range of motion. A nice little trick is to use a power band and think about pushing your band away from you with your heel like you would a leg press. This will engage the quads and assist you in achieving a straighter knee. The amount of pressure I am putting through my hands is very mild to moderate as we are only facilitating knee extension and by no means forcing the knee straight. The key is repetitions, not a few big thrusts to achieve better range of motion. Another viable knee straightening exercise is a raised push down. Lie on your back and raise your affected leg up onto the bed or on a bench. Pop that band around the middle of your foot and push out into it. This will mean that you're contracting your quads. Really focus on getting the knee straight. This is a great exercise because not only do you get the straightening, but you also get some swelling management here as well because you've raised your leg above your heart. Great exercise to work on both knee straightening and also a little bit of bending. Part three that we want to try to work on is getting our quads function back or our quads ability back. And how we know that you've got this is your ability to lie in bed and raise your leg up. We want to make sure that when we raise our leg up, 
our lower leg so where our calf is doesn't drop down. We want it to be locked out as straight as possible. So when we raise our leg up in bed, it's not floppy. We don't have a floppy knee. It's not sort of the lower shank of your leg isn't just sort of flopping around. Why that's really important is when you get up to walk and you don't have crutches and you don't have a brace on a few weeks down the track and you go to step, if you don't have that quad strength to lock the knee out, you'll bend and there's a chance that you might have a second injury to that knee, uh, which would be very problematic and not very nice considering you've just gone through the uh, trauma of the surgery and we don't want you to re-injure yourself. So if we can get those few things done, we get the pain and swelling down, we get your flexion back, we get your extension back, and we get your quads function back, you're taking really good care of yourself in that phase one. So guys, these are the most important things that you can do is get these major facets right. Once you've done those things and you're looking to do some extra, these are some things that we can definitely do to try to help you get that little bit further ahead in your rehab whilst you're stuck in a brace and predominantly stuck in bed. So the first exercise would be a lateral sling or lateral hip muscle exercise. So we're just going to do a side leg raise. Very underrated exercise. It's very challenging for your lateral sling for your hip. So raising up, make sure you're engaging the top of your glutes. You can add a band if you'd like. To work on our glute max or our big glute muscles at the back, we can do a prone leg raise, raising the leg up in the air. We can add a band for extra resistance if we need. It is a very challenging and very tiring exercise, even for the best of times, as I am demonstrating here. We can also, in that position, work on the groin muscles of the bottom leg. Simply keep the leg straight, raise the leg in the air to work those adductors and get them firing. Now these exercises, once again, are not as important as doing those three major principles in phase one. Your priority is getting the swelling down, getting the knee range of motion back and getting the strength back. But if you've done that and you've done those adductor and hip muscle exercises, the groin and hip exercises, you can work on doing these core uh, strengthening exercises as well. Dish holds are a great way to work on some abdominal strength. It is plausible to do a front plank if the affected leg is resting on the unaffected leg. However, once again, this is not as important as doing those major exercises that we've had at the start of the video. Finally, some options are doing some cross training, so using battle ropes, using a ski erg, even using a rower. However, of the tier of importance, this would come last, so make sure you do those other things we spoke about first. So guys, make sure that you follow those few principles we get the pain and swelling down, we get the leg straight, we can bend the knee, and we've got good quads function. Make sure you get those things done first. Once you've done that, definitely get your lateral hip going, and we can even work on doing some trunk stuff as well. Definitely the extras will come for people that are stuck in the brace for longer, and they can manage doing the extra exercises because they're not as sore because enough time has passed. If you're someone that's just had a pure ACL injury, the likelihood is that you will probably be back to standing and walking and doing different exercises. But if you're stuck in a brace for longer because you've had the meniscus injury, definitely doing those extras is really important, especially if you're stuck in the brace for up to six weeks. So guys, really hope you've enjoyed that video. Uh, please share this with someone that you think needs it. I think it's important that we get good information out there. And if you've enjoyed watching, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video on ACL Rehab. Have a great day, guys. Catch you later.